company of Naaman. He's, he's very familiar to us, isn't he? It says that he was an influential man, the commander of the army of Amram. He was powerful, but he wasn't all powerful. It says that he was very successful in the sight of the king and all the people in the land. But Naaman had a problem that all of his power, all of his influence couldn't resolve. Have you ever heard about the 800 pound gorilla in the room <laughs> that nobody's really want to talk about, but they know it's sitting right there, just sitting. Mm -hmm. But they can't do anything about it. Well, Naaman had such an 800 pound gorilla. Naaman was a leper. I would also venture to tell you that he was full of pride, full of pride. I will submit to you this morning that some of us have some 800 pound gorillas in our lives that we know that are there, but we won't submit to the instructions of God. Good God Almighty. That we can get rid of that thing off our backs. Hallelujah. When we're sick, we'll do almost anything. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. To get well. We'll do almost anything. Naaman was no different. He was willing to go even to a foreign country to get his healing. You know, there are some people right now in the world that apply to Bogota to get treatment, a miracle treatment for something. When it's right within their reach, all they got to do is open the instruction. Amen. Hallelujah. Even the Bible says, even in the midst of Naaman's great victory, he was still faced with this skin disease. And some of us have great things going on in our lives. We have victories in all over the place. We have the favor of God. But there's that one thing that we just can't seem to overcome. But the Bible says that God used the little Israelite maid that had been captured to bring about his divine providence Good God. and Naaman's life. Amen? Wow. Mm -hmm. Even in her captivity, she wasn't bitter or upset, but she wanted to tell somebody about God. Let's begin with how God used this little meek and humble servant. She wanted to share the good news of God. And sometimes we are not in the best place. But wherever we are, God is still there. And he's still God. Amen? Amen. The Israelite maid shared with her mistress, she said, you know what? And I'm using paraphrasing. She said, I wish that my master would go and find the prophet because he could heal him of leprosy. We know that it was a common practice for kings to send letters ahead, letters of induction, uh, introduction ahead, right? But the first thing I want you to pay attention to is what she said. When she was talking to her mistress, she said, if my master would go to the prophet, she didn't say if my master would go to the king. Hello? The instruction that Naaman went and talked to the king, I, I want to go because what do I have to lose? I'm paraphrasing. What do I have to lose? I want to go. So the king wrote him a letter. But the letter of instruction was not correct. The letter of instruction said, and let's go to the word, it told him it told, the king wrote the letter for Naaman to send to the king Joram of Israel. The letter said, and I'm paraphrasing, when my servant gets to you, I want you to heal him. Amen? Look at your words, saints of God. 
Look at the word. What does it say? Because it's not about passing out. It says, he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying in verse 6, Now when this letter is coming to thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. But the maiden didn't tell him to go to the king. Uh-huh. Who did she tell him had the power by God to heal him? The prophet. She told him to go to the prophet. You got Naaman who followed the instructions of his king. We can give him a few kudos for that. But he heard the instructions himself. I want you to go find the prophet. Well, we're seeking out the, an answer from the wrong place. You're not going to get the right answer. Hallelujah. Amen. But it says that he went anyway. And when he brought the letter to King Joram of Israel, King Joram rent his clothes. He said, who am I that I can heal you of leprosy? I'm not God. Shouldn't we ask that question too? When people come to us for an answer, we need to direct them to the all-powerful, yeah. all-knowing, all-seeing God. Amen. That's right. That's a good word. Sometimes we set ourselves up. We can't do anything separate and apart from Christ. Right. We can do nothing without Christ. Right. Everything we're able to do, we're able by the grace and power of a living God. Right. But he says that King Joram rent his clothes and Elisha heard about it. And he sent a message to the king. Why did you rent your clothes? In these times, if someone rent their clothes and has in sackcloth and ashes, there was some kind of distress, a great agitation. So Elijah gave the king some instructions. Do you hear this thing? Yes, I do. About following even the most minute detail of the instructions. Mm -hmm. It depends on whether you have the blessing of God or whether you give the opposite response, whether you don't get what it is you seek. It says, Elijah said, King, send him to me. Send Naaman to me. Elijah was already aware of his, that he was full of pride, arrogant. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 and 7 and 8, it says, let the wicked forsake his way. Yes. And the unrighteous the man, man his, his thoughts. thoughts. And let him return, return to who? The Lord. Return to who? The Lord. Return to the king? <laughs> or return to King Jesus? The Lord. Preach. Did it say return to Pastor Mallon? No. Did it return, return to the minister? It says, return to who? The Lord. And it says, God will have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon mm -hmm. all of our sin. For the Bible says, my thoughts, saith God, are not, are not your thoughts. His ways are not our ways. For as high as the heavens are than the earth, so is God's ways higher than our ways, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Thank you, Lord, for that. The instruction was very simple. Go to the prophet that he might heal you of leprosy. But he got sidetracked. Sometimes we often do when we don't follow the instructions. Very simple. So what did Elijah do? Elijah didn't even come to the door. Now, you know that made that man mad. Yeah, it did. Naaman felt like there should have been some pomp and circumstance that he was coming to be healed, and he wanted it blasted all over the place. Music 
all in the scrolls. Naaman's going to heal. Naaman is going to be healed. He wanted to have all the pop and circumstance, sometimes like we do. Hallelujah. But it says Elijah sent a messenger to the door. He a, told him, he said, a messenger? he didn't get up from his chair. <laughs> Tried to bring him to a place of humility. He said, tell him to go wash in the Jordan seven times. And we all know that the Jordan, I mean, the number seven is the, is the number of completion. Amen? He didn't say go name it and wash three times, five times, or six and three quarters of a time. He said go and wash seven times in the river Jordan. Sometimes our deliverance, our healing, our breakthrough. It's in the simplicity of following what God says. Not how we want to do it, mm -hmm. but how God said to do it. Amen. So can you just visualize Naaman with me? Here he is going down to the Jordan. Amen. Why can't I go to those other two rivers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why me, Naaman? Great captain. I'm the man. Why? I got to go in that dirty water. Mm -hmm. I'm the man. <laughs> and then you're going to tell me to do it seven times, embarrassing me in front of all my people. But how bad do you want it? How bad do we want to be delivered? How bad do we want to be healed? How bad do we want to be set free from the strongholds? There's nothing missing. Nothing broken in Christ if you follow God's way. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. 